Hi everyone. Um, how many of you have actually started applying for jobs? A show of hands, please. Very few. I take it there's a lot of procrastinators out there, like myself. Um, I actually started to look for a job about six years ago, in 2009. I graduated in business in, uh, in the UK, and I just thought, you know, I've been studying already for a well couple of years. Um, I just really don't want to look for a job yet. So I'm going to go home, I'm from Gran Canaria, and lay on the beach and get tanned. And just like, you know, I'll let future Jenny worry about looking for a job and being responsible and growing up and being an adult. Of course, Jenny didn't realize that 2009 was in the middle of financial crisis. So of course, companies were limiting um, all sorts of employment and it was just gonna be really tough to look for a job. So I thought, you know, I need some money. I can't really afford a master's. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a summer job for a couple of months and then I'll go back to the UK and go job hunting over there. Now, of course, um, I got into a five-star hotel, the opening of a five-star hotel, and I started working there as a summer job initially. However, I was one of the 30% of the people that was offered a permanent position. So I was really excited about that, and I said, okay, I'll, start, I'll carry on working here, and then I'll start looking for a job, you know, online. That's what internet is for. So I started applying. I applied, I applied. It came to six to 12 months, and I started to get so many rejections. All of them, well, the companies that did decide to give any feedback said that I had irrelevant work experience, because I had worked from six to 12 months in hospitality. So I started to feel that I was being placed into this horrible box called the average box. So I was being discarded for my CV because I didn't have relevant work experience. What sort of relevant experience do you expect a 20 something year old to have straight after university? So I grew really frustrated and six months grew to 12 months and it just became really tough to actually look for a job. And I couldn't even get to the interview because my CV was being filtered because I didn't have the relevant work experience. So, after one year, normally you would break down and I would say, hey, you know, maybe hospitality is not so bad. But I remember this one day, 15 minutes before my work shift was over, this really angry woman comes towards me and she's very angry. And I'm like, oh my God, it's 15 minutes before my shift, what am I gonna do? So my, my colleague says, do you want me to take her? I'm like, no, I'll take it. So she comes to me and I do like I normally do with very angry customers. You let them vent and they talk and they scream for themselves about 15 minutes before they realize that you didn't say anything. Then they calm down and that's when they realize, oops, maybe I'm overreacting a little bit, which was the case. This woman calmed down and we started talking. And um, she asked me how many languages I spoke. She asked me about my story, so I told her about it. And she really liked me. So she, after a year, I finally managed to get invited to an interview at Bloomberg because she was a director at Bloomberg. And I was like, yes, after one year, I'm gonna get into Bloomberg. So I get on the airplane ride to Madrid, uh, to Madrid, and I'm ashamed, well, I'm not really ashamed. I, I would say that I'm one of the few Asians that absolutely suck at maths. I'm terrible. So I came to this interview at Bloomberg and they start asking me all these financial maths questions which I messed up. I messed up and I failed so bad. <laughs> and I walked out of the interview and I was like, okay, Jen, so it took you about one year to get here and now you failed. Now what? So usually on the airplane ride back, I would just put on my earphones and you know start crying about what a bad, terrible interview it was. But I thought, you know what? It was actually funny <laughs> how bad it was. So I started sitting there and then I noticed this man sitting next to me. And um, he's wearing, you know, like just checking the signals, he's wearing a Cartier watch, a Mont Blanc pen, and I was like, this dude must have a business for sure. So I take out my interview notes, and I start opening them, like, really wide. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he talks to me, of course, and he's like, are you studying? I'm like, yeah, actually, I'm studying for an interview, which I just failed, but he doesn't have to know. So he turns out to be the owner of IKEA, Spanish islands and South America. So he tells me about you know this project um, that he wants to reach smaller islands such as Ibiza, Menorca, 
All these islands where there's a big fluctuating population, but the population is not stable or big enough for a huge, for a big IKEA store. So he tells me about how he wants to reach them, and during three hours, we brainstorm. We start talking about how actually to develop this concept to get um, like mini IKEA stores for less than 10% of the real cost of an IKEA store, but still getting the same amount of profit by organizing all the online sales, the digital catalogs, the logistics, creating a logistics systems that would make sure that you would get your furniture in the next 48 hours. Um, so we did this um, on a napkin, actually, where they're spraying swimming. And in the end, he turns out to really like me, so he offers me a job. So at 22, I moved to Mallorca and I become um, the external sales, uh, external deputy manager um, for external sales. So that was really exciting because I was 22 and I began to manage this team of 60 people spread across seven islands. So I got to travel every single week and I learned so much and I managed to take responsibilities. I worked with IT people to create the logistics systems. I negotiated with transport companies. I managed people who were double my age for sales, uh, created incentive plans. It was just the opportunities I had that I had it was amazing. Now, how did I get from there to Poland and work for Google? So basically, um, initially when I worked um, at IKEA, they sent me to Mallorca, which is a beautiful island. Um, but then they changed my director, so they wanted to send me back to Canary Islands. And I was like, hell no, I just left there, I'm not gonna go back, like I'm only 22, I don't wanna be so close to home. So I was in Tenerife and I was like, what shall I do now? So there was this Startup Weekend event. I went to this Startup Weekend event and um, I started in the icebreaker. Um, I met one of my friends who is now at Google in Poland. And I started also analyzing the signals, you know, like, so this guy, he tells me he won Startup Weekend in Wrocław. I was like, take. That's perfect, I want to win today. Um, I work for Google, take, that's a nice corporation. And then uh, he speaks like Chinese, Spanish, Polish. I was like, this guy must be amazing. He must have great connections. Which he did, because, well, unfortunately we didn't win the Startup Weekend, but um, I did get a job at Google. Um, well, he referred me and I did enter the interview process, so that was amazing. Now, it's been six years. Yeah, six years. Um, as I said, I'm not very good at maths. It's been six years and I've had an amazing life trip. Like, I think not a lot of young people can say that they've done so many things. But I still have like this year of frustration in my mind, especially since I came to Rotterdam, I started to get involved in a lot of youth opportunities um, creation. And I've organized the TEDx Youth Year. I'm really worried about the youth unemployment that we have in Spain at the moment. And I remember this year where I got rejection after rejection and I got put into this terrible average box just because I didn't come from the best business school in the world, I didn't have money to study a fancy master's, I didn't have the relevant work experience, so there, there you go, inside the average box. The thing is, we really must review the corporation's hiring systems because corporations nowadays are just filtering these CVs looking for signals such as the best business school, um, the relevant um, internships. They forget about all these students that are different. You know, the student that decided to study arts or study, decided to study dance or decided to go traveling for a year. Does that mean that these people that didn't take the conventional path are unable to learn to become the top performers in your corporation? The fact that you're putting these young people inside this average box and discarding them means that you're missing out on really creative, fresh ideas because they don't come from the conventional profile that you're looking for. So that's something that's really important and really passionate to me because Google is different in that sense. For example, I work with people for the Spanish market that are from seven different nationalities. Everyone from the different university, from a different degree. And even one of my favorite managers, um, she's one of the most competent ones, she studied sports as a master's, no offense, but you know, generally, <laughs> that's not something you would review for a consultancy company, for example. So, that's it. I mean, for me, it's very important that corporations review this process to provide fair opportunities and destroy this average box. However, a piece of advice to you guys, now that you're gonna start, you know, job hunting soon, 
Number one, do not be lazy. I'm guilty for that. Don't leave the job hunting for the last second. And second, you must realize that it is very possible that you will be placed into this average box. So you must not let this put you down. Like for myself, I, I got a, a well couple of um, failures before I actually got to where I am now. But you must not let this put you down. And also, you must also, while you're at the degree, think of ways to actually outstand and come outside of this average box. And above all, guys, interviews don't always come in packages. Like for me, I had three live interviews. One was with an angry customer at a hotel. Two was an airplane ride, and three was a startup weekend event. So guys, really, don't go for, if you, if you get rejected for the standard process online with your CV, then get outside of the box, go to a networking event, talk to people, and learn your personal pitch. I think that's mostly it. Thanks, guys.